How often do you get to go inside someone else's home and see their huge American cichlid tank? Well, it doesn't happen to me that often, so I was super excited to get to do just that. And I saw this tank and I have to tell you, after seeing it, it's made me even more excited to get plans rolling on my own huge American cichlid tank. All right, let's get things rolling. Here we go. I know some of you are thinking, hey, you've already got an American cichlid tank right over there, so why do you need another one? Well, yeah, I've got one, but let me tell you some things about that. Although, yes, I technically have an American cichlid tank in my 180 gallon acrylic aquarium, I've been feeling a little bit, I hate to use the word bored. Well, okay, bored with it. And maybe even more than a little. I'm actually excited about the remodel with the new driftwood and all. And I mean, I love my redheaded Tapajos and they're really starting to grow and color up. Well, most of them anyway. Yeah, I'm looking at you, little guy. But my angels are not the centerpieces that I originally wanted. I thought their beauty would be all I need from them, and I find myself wanting more. I'm watching them and waiting for them to do something cool. Okay, do something cool. I mean anything at all. For real. Honestly, if I had tons of tanks, this would be a great combo, angels and geos. But I don't have a lot of room, at least not for larger tanks like this. These angels are pretty, but outrageously mellow most of the time, and I don't really feel the attachment like I do with my Africans. Even with how cool the Tapahos are, I really don't feel that connection. By the way, check out the red tail shark I added to the tank recently. He's been doing a great job nibbling on the driftwood and cleaning things around the tank, and he's gorgeous. I've almost always had a red tail shark in my community tanks before I moved on to cichlids. Oh, but I really don't feel any connection with him either. He's really cool and I love him in the tank, but he's still just a fish to me. Nothing more. None of these guys have even a fraction of the personality that my Africans have. But word on the street is that the big boy American cichlids do. All right, well time to show you this huge American tank. And I'm gonna also show you, since there are some stark differences between Africans and American cichlids, I'll show you some video of my boys doing what they do best compared to these new guys doing what they do best. I was really impressed when I saw this tank. I've seen videos of it, but that doesn't match at all how impressive in person it is when you walk in the door and see this. The first thing that stands out to me is those Oscars and then the Severums. There are three Oscars and three different types of Severums. A gold, a green, and my favorite, a red shoulder. Good looking fish. And one thing you can't really get from this video is their size. Because the tank is so big, 8 by 2 by 2 and a half feet, so like my Alcatraz except a little taller, the magnitude of these Americans isn't captured very well, but what you can see is their shape. This round body shape is something you don't really see in the African cichlid world, but it's a quite common characteristic with Americans. Just take a look at my African cichlid inmates in Alcatraz. There are some slight body differences among them, but overall, they're all fairly slim and long, none of them very circular. And even when some of these fish get up to and over 12 inches long, They'll never have the girth of an Oscar. Even the Severums are pretty thick. I haven't really seen any large Severums in person, except maybe occasionally at the pet store. I had some as a kid, but I never knew what I was doing back then, and none of them really made it beyond six inches. I am considering giving Severums another go, now that I have more knowledge and experience once I have a tank for them, but there are so many great South American and Central American cichlids that I'm still in the process of finalizing a stocking list. Some of you have already offered me suggestions, but I have a terrible memory, and if you have any stocking ideas, I'm all ears. Hey, about that Oscar you may have noticed that's always swimming sideways in here? Well, here's her sad, but cool and funny origin story, as told by her daddy, the owner of this tank, Elgin Brost. So yeah, when we, uh, when we brought Yennefer, the uh, fish with the spinal, the curved spine home, uh, she was very shy initially. She did her back and forth floating on her side across the top of the tank. When she was done being shy, she decided that she was going to force herself on everyone with violence. So she came down and whenever the Oscars would cross her way, she would just turn into a psychopath. She just eventually settled into the group. But she was quite the firecracker when she uh, got put in the tank. You will subscribe. Ding ding. Another thing I noticed right away was how this American cichlid tank is stocked with some very odd looking cichlids. Oh wait, those aren't even cichlids, are they? No, there are rainbow fish in here as well as a gaggle of some hard-working clown loaches. The clowns are so cute as they shoal together. They'll all clean for a while and then it's like the brake whistle goes off and they just sit there, making you wonder if they've just died. 
Then after a few minutes, the whistle blows again and they're back at it. I think it's great that Elgin feels comfortable keeping these outsiders in with his cichlids. The clown loaches are actually his favorite fish in the tank. Now I know that people have successfully kept outsiders in their own African cichlid tanks, but I do not feel at all comfortable placing some poor innocent fish in here with these ultra-violent loonies. And that's why there's nothing in Alcatraz except for my African cichlids. People have reported huge successes keeping plecos in with their Africans. Harmless, good-natured, and hard-working plecos. But I've seen firsthand what my guys are capable of, even with the pleco, and it isn't pretty. So I'm not playing that game. By the way, extra points if you can tell me from which movie I stole the word ultra-violent. Elgin's cichlid collection is limited to Severums and Oscars, and I know there are a lot more choices with different colors and patterns, some of them outrageously gorgeous like the Red Texas Cichlid and Jack Dempsey. I'm looking forward to putting my own list of American cichlids together based on both physical and behavioral characteristics. As far as comparing the Americans with the Africans, I definitely have to say that overall, the African cichlids are the more beautiful of the two. You just can't beat these intense colors with so many varieties. Just check out Zeke the Zebra Obliquidens, the best fish that ever lived, and the Super Red Empress that will still color up much more by the way, he's still new to the tank, and this Mdoka White Lips, and that's just to name a few. The colors are all over the spectrum and they're so bold and bright. When you put a bunch of them together, the blend of colors is almost overwhelming. Americans are cool, but if you're wondering which of the two is more beautiful, I think Africans win, no contest. Do you agree or you think that I'm off base here and that the Americans actually take the first place beauty prize? Let everyone know. When you look at this big old American tank, how would you describe it? Bustling with activity? Fish racing back and forth in a frenzy? No, not at all. I mean, the busiest fish in the tank aren't even cichlids. The Oscars and Severums almost move like, like, well, have you ever seen those old monster movies where there's these huge creatures making great sweeping movements, but it looks like they're moving in slow motion. You see where I'm going with this? These Oscars and Severums are in no hurry to get anywhere or do anything. Just moseying along. Nothing is so important that you need to rush to it. This is a pretty common characteristic with American cichlids, and one of the top reasons why I want them so badly. In contrast, take a look again at my African nut jobs. They're occasionally taking it slow, but overall, they're in a hurry all the time. And it's really no wonder. I mean, if you sit long enough, you never know who's going to come up and bite your tail fin off. Mean boys. Of course, some Americans are on the even meaner side. It's just that they don't seem like they're in a hurry to get you. They'll take their time and do it when they have a minute. I think the greatest display of their different personalities comes with supper. All you out there familiar with both African and American cichlids already know what to expect, but check out Elgin's Americans. Go at their food. Just focus on the big boys, as I've already mentioned the smaller fish in here aren't even cichlids. What I'm going to do is take a bite of this delicious morsel, then I'll savor it, chew side to side, both sides of the mouth to get the full experience. Wait a moment, then try another too fast and it just ruins the entire experience. Now watch the inmates of Alcatraz go at it. It's all business and cram as much in as fast as you can before someone else gets it. If I plop these guys in Elgin's tank and fed them all at the same time, those Americans wouldn't even get a bite. Unless they were chomping on one of my inmates, that is. I don't have any of the Americans that are said to have great puppy-like personalities where it's like they're part of the family and have a connection with you. But American cichlid keepers rave about this and love it about them. This is one of the top reasons I actually plan on spending all my wife's money to buy a tank large enough to house them. I want to experience that for myself. I'm tired of my only American cichlid experience being with these gorgeous, yet boring, angelfish and my redheads. I want some Americans that make you feel like they're part of the family, not just ornaments in a glass box. But listen up, I want geos no matter what. But the main attraction is going to be those big, tough Americans. And again, I'm up for suggestions for a stocking list if you have any. You'll need a tank size, I know, but I'm not going to give you that yet but just assume it's gonna be big. So what'd you think of this big American cichlid tank? And I would like you to let me know what your favorite characteristic of crazy African cichlids is, and then also what's your favorite characteristic of South American and Central American cichlids? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.